Okay, we've extracted the Jamboree script into a folder with no spaces or a path with no spaces in it. For now, that's how it is. We'll probably fix that at some point. Once you get that, you want to right click and say run with PowerShell. Okay, you'll get a splash screen. We're in the path delete J1. First thing we're going to do is just run down the list. So we will ABD download and install. What it's doing now is it's downloading the latest Android command line tools, extracting the Android tools and installing Java for us. Also in the background, it's installing Python with objection that we'll need for later. So as of now, we've already installed Java. We've already set up Python with objection. Now we're using Java SDK manager for Android to download the latest image files and emulator and the platform tools that we need to actually start up the emulator. So right now we already have a working Java and Python environment using the Nougat package without installing anything or having any administrative rights. The only thing you need local administrator for is installing the Hexam for Intel and AMD are going to be this second step here. That is the only thing you need local administrator for with this setup. Right, we've downloaded the everything we need for Android for x86 Android 11 with Google Play and everything you need to get going. So we're going to skip step two. We've already installed the acceleration drivers and you may need to reboot for AMD. It's Hyper-V and another, a different driver. We're going to go ahead and click step three. This will download Burp Suite for us and extract it. This is what we're going to use to inspect and test the traffic that's going to and from the Android device. So you'll just go ahead and click next, next. And you should see intercept is off by default, but just make sure that interceptor is off. And you kind of want to be looking at this HTTP history tab. So we'll go ahead and minimize this. Once burp is up and running, we will click OK. And now it has downloaded the certificate that's on the proxy burp suite program that we can use to send to Android to inspect that traffic. So our next step here is going to start for, we're going to start up the emulator. So now we have Java, we have Python, we have the emulator, we have the image, and we have the certificate, and we have Burp Suite running. There's a couple more steps, and we'll be able to inspect this traffic going between the emulator and the application. This has got the complete suite, all the Google Play network and everything is set up. This is the kind of 
working. Google Play Store is all working. You don't have to worry about any of that. So now we got it up. Our next step, once it's up and running, we're going to run step five. Now you can stop here. You have a legit Android emulator, no china.com, no local administrator, no nothing. You're good to go. Other than initially installing the acceleration drivers for your architecture, you are good to go right now. You have a legit setup. But to inspect the traffic, we need to install certificates at the system level on the Android device. And to do that, we need root for that. We're going to use this root AVD tool that will automatically download magisks and patch the image file for this emulator and give us local root that we need to do whatever testing we need to do on the emulator itself. Now, if you do see a message about unauthorized devices in here, you can click fix unauthorized ADB and that will wipe the data and reset that for you. Sometimes it happens, sometimes you can't click the accept or allow ADB fast enough, but this will fix that for you. But it will also wipe all the data on the device itself, the user data. So we've installed Magisks, we're good to go. We want to restart. So we're going to start the emulator back up after we've installed Magisk. And now we're going to have root once this starts back up. Once we have root, everything we can go from there as far as installing whatever software we need. whatever modules we need for Magisk, any anti-root detection, anything else we want to do at the root level for this device, we can now. So we have our burp suite still running. We've got some traffic, but notice there's no HTTPS traffic because none of the applications that are running allow you to see that traffic because of SSL pinning. So what we're going to do is go ahead and run step six. And we're going to upload. It's going to create the convert the certificate to a PEM file. And once it creates that PEM file, it's going to rename it using the cert util and then automatically upload it to the emulator and auto automatically installed trusted user certs. So now all we need to do is restart the emulator once more because our certificate that we just installed needs to be applied to the whole system. What I like to do is go ahead and turn off Google Play and sometimes I'll even go in magisks and uninstall anything I don't need, clean up the system a little bit, hide and and use the root hiding. But we want to go ahead and shut it down. So we're going to do AVD power off. And this will be the last time we restart the emulator. Now we're going to start it back up one last time. So we've shut it down to install Magisks, and we've shut it down to install our user certificate. And since we don't have 
any applications that aren't using SSL pinning. We're going to go and install base APKs. Now this is just some a random list of of APKs that I find useful so far that I've been playing with. And one of those is DuckDuckGo browser. So you can install whatever application you like. So this pulls down the latest from GitHub, each one of these applications. Split package installer, a file manager, and DuckDuckGo. Now, you know that it's working because you'll see certificate authority installed by an unknown party. This means that you are inspecting or at least attempting to inspect that HTTPS traffic. But notice how we don't have a whole lot of HTTPS. And the only HTTPS we do have is Magisk's downloading certificates. Now, that means that the Magisk's installer or the application itself didn't have the SSL pinning within the program itself. So we are able to catch HTTP tra HTTPS traffic without doing SSL depending. All right, so we have DuckDuckGo installed. So now we're ready to run objection. That's number seven. So right now you can hit this command prompt and you have a full complete environment with Java and Python and whatever else you need to install. You can use pip modules. You're good to go from there. Also for ADB shell, you've got shell access. It's su to root. And you've got root access. But what we're going to do now is use objection. This will essentially download the latest version of freedom extract it because it's an XZ file using Python. And it's going to upload that executable to the server or the emulator. And then it's going to run a, basically a list of packages. So we're going to type duck and we're going to click duck, duck, go. And the package names might be different than what you normally are used to but generally you'll be able to figure out which one is which. So we're gonna do, for example, DuckDuckGo. This starts the emulator for you and we'll automatically type and hit enter for Android SSL depending. So now we're injecting, we've injected with objection. Now we should be able to start seeing some of this SSL traffic. So now the keyboard doesn't work. We'll fix that. But here's an example, HTTPS GitHub. And we'll look at Burp Suite and we have HTTPS GitHub. So we've essentially bypassed SSL pinning with DuckDuckGo and we're, we're, for example, we're tunneling all that traffic through here. Now that may not be SSL pinning with DuckDuckGo, but this is an example of what that would look like. 